Uptown Chicago. Chicago, I read about you, the, the city of big shoulders, you, you player of railroads, you stacker of wheat. Chicago. Chicago, we're on the west side, they will kick your butt for a Newport. Yeah. Chicago! Only in Chicago did I once see a man do the lambada with his wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my one night stand, my HBO spectacular. <laughs> You people actually ventured out. I applaud you. You people came out from your mansions, from your apartments, from your condominiums, from your trailers, from your rumpus rooms, and you came to a three-dimensional event with your five senses. Yeah! I hope. <laughs> okay, now, um, you know what I want to do, too, is I want to just talk to the home viewer. This is my show. I get to do anything I want. Okay, I want to um, talk to the home viewer for a second, so can I have a close-up? Um... Hello, uh, Mr. Home Viewer. Hi. Um, could I talk to the man that's laying on a couch right now with a video remote control pointed right at the TV? Hi. Yeah, and you're eating like a big bag of Doritos? Um, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're just looking at me and you're going, here's another affable, sanguine, overbearing comic. <laughs> and I know that what you're thinking, that you want to uh, click it. And you know what I have to say? Click it. <laughs> Come on, click it. Oh, I'd love to. What are you going to do? Go watch Mama's Family, huh? What are you going to do? Go watch the Home Shopping Network, you know? Watch a ring, huh? Watch a home humidifier? Go. I am so glad he is gone, I swear to God. <laughs> made me very nervous. <laughs> okay, good. Now it's just us, and I can tell you a little bit about um, myself. Um, I am uh, from the 70s. <laughs> Anybody from the 70s? Yeah, the 70s! The 70s! I, you know, I, I've been thinking about this, and my personality was distilled in the 70s. My character was defined in the 70s. The ugliest decade of the century. <laughs> It was so, it was such a burnt orange, avocado green time, you know? Have you noticed that nobody has a good picture from the 70s? Who has one? Does anyone have one? No one, one person has one. Even the pets looked bad in the 70s. Cheryl Teagues looked bad in the 70s. God, I'm telling you, but I, I'm from the class of 75, and um, I am the 70s. I am the, I am the 70s personified. I am Billy Beer. <laughs> I am Flares. Yes. I am Sticks, Kansas, and the Marshall Tucker Band. Yes. I am every black actor who played Lionel on the Jefferson. <laughs> the bus on the Partridge family. <laughs> I am Lillian Carter. I am Bob Eubanks. I am Jim Lang. I am the dating game. And I never recovered from when they changed Darren's on Bewitched. <laughs> well, what was that? I mean, one minute there's Dick York, then there's Dick Sargent. You don't change dicks midstream, okay? <laughs> This is my version of psychedelic daisies. <laughs> because I was on the dating game 17 times. I was such a geek on the dating game. Are there any geeks here tonight? Yeah. I was such a geek in high school. I was one of those guys in third period. I used to come into class pushing a projector. <laughs> you know, like an audio-visual geek? And I'd be wearing Hagar Fandomatic slacks <laughs> and a dickie and headgear and a retainer. <laughs> and the teacher would say, he's such a fucking geek. <laughs> and I had a huge Melvin, just a total huge Melvin. 
Now you guys don't know what a Melvin is because here you call them wedgies. You know like when your slacks gets totally cut up in your butt, it's like a wedgie? Now if you're a girl and you get it, it's called a Claudia. On both coasts. <laughs> Campbell toes? I learned something. I learned something. So there I am on the dating game, right? And I'm totally have a Melvin. And the bachelorette was a Cla had a Claudia. She had a, one of those geek hairdos, you know? It was really flat in the back, but in the front it had kielbasa sausage. <laughs> and she said, bachelor number one, um, if you could be any kind of car in the world, what kind of car would you be? I said, used. <laughs> Bachelor number one, if you were my alarm clock in the morning, how would you wake me up? I said, with a big dong. <laughs> oh. I'm from uh, suburbia. That's why I wanted this set to like reflect that. I'm from the mundane, ordinary, listless suburban backyard. I grew up in a place called Glendale. Oh, which, so, which is so boring, which is so boring, it makes Burbank seem like Berlin in the early 30s. When I was a kid, I did nothing but eat scooter pies and go, fuck. <laughs> and it was so weird because I grew up in this very goyim, bun cake, waspy kind of Velveeta, nutmeggy kind of a Pillsbury croissant and a roll type of world, you know? <laughs> And I'm like Jewish and Puerto Rican, so it was just like... It was like two hemispheres smashing into one person, you know? It was very difficult around Easter because I would hide eggs and then feel very guilty looking for them. <laughs> but I just wanted to get out of Glendale. I wanted to like move on with my life. You know, I had like some... I was a cornucopia of talents and emotions. <laughs> you were not assigned to laugh. So here's the story. So I decided that I was going to get some money and get a job. So I got a job at Photomat. Has anybody ever... Do you know what Photomat is? Do you have them here? It's like the giggiest job in the world. I mean, it's like corporate America at its unbridled worst. It's like corporate America saying, well, let's just put a Swiss Alpine chalet in the middle of a parking lot. <laughs> It was such a gig. When I worked there, I was so scared that a car was going to parallel park on me. <laughs> Plus, it was so sad. It was so sad because I worked there and I was such a geek. I would like, I had this huge Ford Fairmont. I still have this Ford Fairmont, you know. It's the only car that has a Melvin. And um, it's this huge classic American car and I would drive to, you know, to, to Photomat and I would get out of this huge car wearing like huge bell bottoms and clogs, right? <laughs> And like, my car was bigger than where I worked. <laughs> so there I am working at Photomat, right? And this is absolutely true. A bee got stuck in there with me. <laughs> People would drive by and I'd be like... <laughs> People would drive by and they thought their snapshots weren't ready. <laughs> But isn't that frightening about being stuck in a small space with a bee? This has happened to me before. I went to see um, a nude live woman to go, you know when you go talk to a nude live woman? Do they have, they have that here? <laughs> Don't be shocked. You are the society that provides us with a multi-billion dollar porno industry, okay? No, you know when you're like in a, they have new, this is what women have to go through in our society. They put them in little boxes and you can go talk to them, you put a quarter in, it's like the Madonna video, you know, and it comes up and there's like a nude live woman and like you talk for a while. So I gave the guy two dollars and I'm talking to a nude live woman, right? And in the middle of our conversation, she looks at me and she goes... <laughs> and I was like, like, this happened to me, I can't believe this. This happened to me, I don't believe this is happening to me. But I like, living, I, like, I like living in Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles now, I should tell you that. I, I actually live in the future. 
I live in the future. I live in Los Angeles. It's the future. I mean, it's so horrible. I bring you the word of the future. If we do not start taking care of our cities, it, they will end up like Los Angeles. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, this is not funny. It's a horrible. It is like there are toxic pollutants in the air. There are uh, ritualistic gang flames. There are pit bull attacks. There's gum all over the sidewalk. <laughs> I hate living there. Anyway. And we're always in traffic. Gridlock, I mean, we're always in cars and we're always in traffic. And there's that, that whole etiquette now about like, you're really not supposed to look at the person next to you when you're driving at a red light. Have you noticed that? Like you're driving and you see a real person with a real children of the corn look. <laughs> you know what I mean? When somebody has that real children of the corn look and you come to a red light and you're like this, you're like, This one guy, he was a yuppie piece of shit, right? He was like a <laughs> yuppie. This, this yuppie piece of shit, right, is in this Chief Cherokee Road Ranger Mercedes SLZ. <laughs> This total children of the corn. He looked like somebody from a Father Dowling mystery, right? <laughs> and, and, and he was really up there, and the light turned green, and we went, and the guy just hurled a bottle of Grey Poupon mustard at me. <laughs> I was dripping in mustard. It looked like Oscar Mayer had been murdered around me. It was like so horrible. People in LA are really like, it's been unbelievable. And I think it's a global thing. As we get into the new Europe and we get into like a whole national thing, we're gonna go on to global situation. And basically what's happening now is have you noticed that people really don't talk anymore? They confess, you know? Living in Los Angeles right now is like being in group therapy with eight million people. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, this is true. Because it, you remember in the old days when people used to go, hi, how are you? Now it's like, hi, I've had two abortions. <laughs> and you're like going, you share too much. I have an emotional skid mark from that, you know? <laughs> Women are really in touch with their feelings. Women are so fucking in touch with their feelings. <laughs> Guys can vouch for me for that. Aren't women, aren't women are so in touch with their feelings? Yeah. Women are always like this. Women are like this. I have a lot of feelings. We have to talk. We just have to talk. We never talk. We gotta talk. We gotta talk. I got a lot of feelings. We gotta talk. We gotta talk. We gotta talk. I got a lot of feelings. We gotta talk. Right? And guys are like this. We talked yesterday. <laughs> Women want men to understand. Men want women to understand one thing. <laughs> women like to talk about their feelings. You know, guys are different. Guys like to put up drywall and use lava soap. <laughs> women, uh, this is unbelievable. Have you ever like come home late at night, you guys, and found your girlfriend just in the middle of the living room, right? And she has black shit under her eyes. <laughs> and her hair is all wet. She has a bathrobe on. She has a cigarette. There's an areola of tissue around her. And there's a Carole King record playing over and over and over again. And she just looks at you right in your eye and she says, I just really need you to hold me. <laughs> I just really need it all holding me. And you're going, who's gonna hold me when I'm holding you? I held you when we talked the other day. You gotta start budgeting your hugs and talks a little better, babe. What you need is a Calgon bath and a highball, okay? Now, you gotta, you, you gotta be nice though, you know, we gotta be nice. We can't get into the hate thing, you know? It's just too easy to fall into that, you know? I, I, I sometimes fall into the hate thing, you know, when I'm like, you know, I'm out there. I mean, once this woman, I was at a, at a, at a restaurant and this girl sat down, she was very crestfallen, she was very resigned, very defiant. And she sat at my table and she just started confessing. 
she started telling me that she said that she cannot have a proper sexual life because really no one satisfies her sexually because she keeps blocking them off. She said that it stems from her father's inability to demonstrate love to her. She told me that her fallopian tubes were frozen. <laughs> and I just looked at her and I said, are the pies fresh? <laughs> I'm lemony and I'm getting outtakes from Sally Jesse Raphael. <laughs> and you can't even drink anymore. Have you noticed that? Because, because apparently the culture abused alcohol as a whole, and they think whenever someone has a drink, they're abusing alcohol. Has it ever happened to you where you're at a restaurant and you're having some fun, and you go, waiter, waiter, could I have another light wine? Thank you. And your friends go like this. <laughs> and they have that real intervention look on their face, you know, it's like, which is kind of like a children of the corn look, you know, and they're like, Taylor, are you having a problem? And you're going, no, I'm having light wine. <laughs> Taylor, are, are you driving? Uh, am, I, am I driving? Do you see a, 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 a clutch? Do you see wheels here? <laughs> Do you see a steering wheel? Oh, yes, I am driving. Could you give me the map from the glove compartment? <laughs> Gotten to the point where you can't even order a bottle of wine with breakfast anymore without people freaking the fuck out. <laughs> and I've had it! understand how people can freak out right now and have like a panic disorder because this happened to me once you know I'm capable of freaking out because you know I fly around all the time you know and once I found myself at um, a Denny's in Dallas and it was so frightening because everybody in this Denny's was wearing like a jogging suit I mean it was just like everybody was wearing like a peach jogging suit and I just was really disturbed by this right and I'm wearing like a Comme des Garçons black ensemble, you know, and I'm like chain smoking and I have Ray-Bans on. I look like Miles Davis, you know, and I'm just like... <laughs> I felt like a fucking Trotsky, right, in this... And I'm thinking to myself, they killed Kennedy here, and I'm here, and I'm very nervous, and everybody's wearing a jogging suit and smells really bun cakey, and I don't know if I like this. And this waitress, the waitress comes up to me, right? And I just wanted to get out of there, but I still was having like a little attitude problem. And she goes, first of all, her name was Yo-Yo. And her hair had a boner. I mean, her hair had a total erection. Her hair had a total boner, right? And she looks at me and she goes, what do you want? She had a little attitude. And I went, um, I'll just have some coffee. She goes away, she comes back, and she says, You scream. <laughs> Did I scream? Did I scream? Uh, oh, my God, I could have screamed. Absolutely, I could have screamed. I mean, like, I mean, I, I, of course, I'm, like, having a spiritual Hiroshima. You know, I'm, like, totally freaking out right now. I mean, look at everybody's in a fucking jogging suit. I hate my life. I'm flying around in planes. I hate the idea that my zip code changes every seven seconds. I, I met a girl in L.A. who I really liked, and she told me that she had an affair with a dolphin, and I said, wow, you must give really good snout, and now she doesn't talk to me anymore. You know, I mean, here we are as a culture in jogging suits, staring into this Nietzsche-like abyss. You know, I mean, I can't believe everybody here is not screaming. I, I mean, here we are about as a culture to make the long slide back to the dark ages, and I won't go. And if I have to hold on with my fingernails, and I, if I have to fucking scream, I will scream. Yes, I did scream, and I will continue to scream. She looked at me and she said, Do you use cream? I share too much. <laughs> Are the pies fresh? Yo-yo? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's like so weird. I mean, it's like you really can freak out, but you can't freak out all the time. You can't become rude. You know, it's too easy to fall into the hate thing and become nasty, you know? And this is what we have to learn. I think this is what our generation has got to learn, you know? And I mean, I mean, uh, listen, the other day I was, at, I was at the mall, 
and I had a little fucking moment, right? A little profound moment where I'm walking through the mall, you know, and I hate going to get some yuppie containers because I have so much in my life I have to contain. And, um, and I'm walking through the mall, right? And this, this guy starts to follow me, right? And he has this real dynamic gel city kind of hair, right? And he has a real children of the corn look, you know, just a real like... starts following me around and like I, I, normally I don't like to be followed you know it's like a very because these days when you're followed it means one of two things one you already know and two I'm not gonna tell you about and he's like and I turn around really fast and he sprays me and I became Mookie from do the right thing I was like what the fuck did you just do I can't believe it. What the? He goes, my name's Kent. I'm a fragrance model. This is Fathom. It's for the man whose feelings run deep. And I'm like going, fuck you. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you invade my space? How dare you and shatter my aura? You expect me to go visit my friends like this smelling like a fucking arboretum? You ruined my day at the mall. I like that. How much is that? I like that. But I, um, no, I mean, l let's not become rude. Let's not, let's not lose our sense of humor, you know? I mean, so many people are losing their sense of humor these days, you know? Um, this, like, you know who the people who are losing their sense of humor the most are the animal rights activists? I mean, they're becoming rude, what they're doing to people. I mean, have you heard what they do? They come up and they spray people's mink coats and stuff. And this, two days ago, I, when I got here to Chicago, I was walking down Lakeshore Drive, and it's cold here, right? And this kind of pilgrim bun cake woman, right, is like wearing like a really long, beautiful, like black llama mink coat, right? And she has like a little attitude, just like kind of like cruising on by. And, um, I'm like, peep that coat out, homie. And, and this animal rights activist, right, like comes up to her and grabs her and says, do you know how many animals had to die for that coat? And the woman said, you know how many animals I had to fuck to get this coat? <laughs> the last thing I'd like to leave you with tonight is this. Um, for you guys in the audience, okay? Um, for you guys in the audience, who are uh, trying to like find a place, you know, in the world and like really get in touch with their feelings, you know. This is what I want you to do. Get in touch with your feelings and don't be afraid of them. And, and, and this is a hint for you. If you ever get pulled over by a cop when you're driving, just remain really, really calm. Real, just get out your vehicular registration. And when that big children of the <laughs> you know, just remain really calm, stay in your seat, be vigilant, and when he sticks his big fucking ugly head right in the car, just look at him and go, I just... And the cop will say, it's just a warning, it's just a warning. Thank you very much for coming.